This couple have been unmarried for so long, they're beginning to look married. The other night they had their first anniversary. Unmarried for a whole year. And they said it wouldn't last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, good evening. Uh, tonight we've invited ourselves, along with 600 journalists, to a small gathering in East Finchley. It's to celebrate the first happy year in the unmarried life of the Queen of the King's Road, Fenella Filthy Rich, and her close friend, her very close friend, of course, that well-known middle-aged teenager, Mr. Gordon Scroggins. Well, I know they're here somewhere, so if you come with me, perhaps we'll have a word with them. <laughs> oh, this, uh, this seems to be the happy couple now. Uh, excuse me, I, I'd like to interview you. Uh, excuse me? I, I want to interview you for 24 hours. <laughs> oh, I think I've got rather a lot of things to do during the time. Well, uh, I, I wonder if I might, if I might join you. Oh, yes. Be our guest. But do mind that fag. We don't want the comfy couch to go up in flames, do we? <laughs> no, it's, it's all gas, you know. Yeah. Well, 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 this is a surprise. <laughs> Uh, what a str strange city, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's, it's fun furniture. Uh, you can say that again, Bert. <laughs> well, now, you've been together now for 50 weeks. And it don't seem a day too much. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you ever considered getting legally married? Oh, no, absolutely not. I mean, marriage is just an outrageous <laughs> archaic gimmick. I mean, as far as we're concerned, it's dead as a dodo, isn't it? Oh, oh dead, as, dead as a dodo, because we, we feel, we feel, we get all the perks oh, and none of the responsibility. I mean, sex is a terribly important thing, isn't it, Heath? Oh, yeah. <laughs> important to be confined only to married people. I mean, as far as he's concerned, he could never stand the restrictions of married life. He needs to be completely free as an individual if he's going to succeed in his work. Oh, uh, you do work then? Yeah, well, of course I ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Thank you. Of course I work. I'm, I'm an active member of FUF. What? <laughs> yes, it's, it's the Finchley Foundation for Universal Freedom. It's a small army of poets and folk singers. All we want is world peace. Yeah, we don't mind who we have to kill to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you. <laughs> now, Mr. Scroggins. Uh, oh, sorry, where are you? <laughs> well, as, uh, as far as marriage is concerned, I... Suppose you wouldn't even go through the motions. Oh, we did through the motions. <laughs> uh, see, the other night we, had, we got stoned up here and we had a bit of a mock wedding. It was a right send-up, wasn't it? Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> One of our chums had his roll-top shirt on and pretended to be the vicar. <laughs> and you put your old boy's scout toggle on my finger as a mock wedding ring. <laughs> I'm, you've got your wire underneath you, don't you? I'm so sorry. I have picture on the, on the front page of the papers yeah. running down Finchley Road at three o'clock in the morning. Running? Yeah, I had my beach caught in the Black Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a grand occasion, isn't it? Um, a lot of people here, many celebrities, yeah, and... the most beautiful instrument. Really? Yeah, we'll never show it to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and look who's over there. I know, well, there you are, you see, the stoop shoulders, the cowboy boots, the thick, fuzzy hair, all matted and tangled. Yes, it's Jimi Hendrix. Do you mind that mummy? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, who's, who's the gentleman over there in the loincloth, standing on his head in the corner? Oh, that's Mummy's private Maharishi. He had several small spots on the Ganges. That's very painful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm off to bed, he. Well, what, what are you going to bed for now, girl? Well, I'm filming at six in the morning. I'm doing another bedroom scene with Terry Stamp. <laughs> How come? Five years in radar, and all you do is strip off in pictures. Only 
if it's essential to the plot. Mm. Uh, what film is it? Little Women. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, better wake the kids up, because this waving part, it seems it could have gone all night. Just a minute. You have children? Of course we have. We're normal, and we? Of course we've got kids. <laughs> He's got four by three previous marriages, and I've got three by four previous marriages. Yeah. Oh, oh Lord. You'd better come yeah. too, he. Well, what's up, then? Your kids and my kids are fighting with our kids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from having children, there's one thing a man can't do properly, and that's niche, you know. Yeah. Of course, anything was invented hundreds of years ago to give some women something to think about while they're talking. <laughs> and, uh, tell me, <laughs> tell me, why do people get married? Why do they get married? For this, that and the other. Mainly the other. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they talk about, uh, you know, the other, a lot before they get married, whispering and nattering, but they don't talk a lot about afterwards, do they? I mean, I mean, you know, they're chatting about their salmon mooses and their long runner beans, but they never talk about it. <laughs> I know it's personal. I'm perfectly well aware that it's personal, but you see, unless the subject is aired occasionally and talked about freely, I mean, then habit sets in like a man of habit, and that's bad. And, you see, times are changing. Women have got to realise this, is because, you see, at the office, I mean, a man is sitting there and all he can see is these mini skirts, you see. I mean, I mean, everywhere he looks, there's... I mean, all he's thinking that we can't think of anything, because... <laughs> it, it's very, very difficult for him. I mean, no wonder a man goes home sometimes feeling... Uh, um, sort of uh, not the usual times. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean it's not, not very fair on the wife, admittedly, because she spent all day looking at a line full of his very large underpants. And that... <laughs> <laughs> but that poor man, there he is at the office, looking at all those minis, you know, three inches below sea level. <laughs> very, very sad. <laughs> is the most common kind of infidelity, commonly known as the seven-year itch. Now, this is perfectly natural, perfectly natural. I mean, it's, it's quite understandable, you see, because when a man, when a man has been married for seven years to the same woman with several noisy kids, it's only quite normal that he should fancy a little piece. And, um, I mean, I don't know anything about this. I'm only going by, you know, some friends of mine. <laughs> no, I don't, because, I mean, I... I couldn't do anything like that. I mean, I, I mean, if I did, my wife would understand and forgive me, but I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't. I mean, she never lets me out of her sight long enough. But, um, <laughs> you see, it's quite understandable how it happens. When a man gets to 40, so I'm told, uh, he, has this, <laughs> he has this desire to prove his masculinity, you see, all over again. And especially, now if, if there's a young bird in the office and she doesn't even look at him, well, straight away his ego's flattened, you know. He, he starts making with the jokes and, and combing his hair forward to hide the ball patches and <laughs> holding his stomach in every time she passes and <laughs> listening to Radio 1. And He's dying to be noticed and be wanted all over again. And there's nothing so sad, so terribly sad, as a middle-aged Romeo chatting up a, a teenage Juliet. <laughs> Ain't your roommate coming tonight? What, Doreen? Oh, yeah, she got herself numbered. How do you mean? Well, this is Nick Nog. She works for at the office, Mr. Weatherby. He's been lusting after for weeks, so she's invited him down here for an ether. Oh, what a drag. Oh, yeah, and he's a right nose. And oh, two. No. Yeah, 43 at least. <laughs> no, I, I'm not 
not I'm not a waiter. I'm, I'm here to dance. Hey, Dolly, Or should I say, hello, Dollies? <laughs> yeah. Here we can have two birds sitting together. Oh, Mr. Weatherly. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. Oh, ha. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to park the pads. <laughs> Beat parking the pads. Would you? I'll dig your bunny and glide suit, man. Oh, thanks, son. A boy, man, man. Well, you, you did say we were coming dancing. Yeah, but not in fancy dress. Here, oh, Paul, oh. I haven't seen you for ages. What's occurring? Ah, uh, nothing much. Most of the time I spend looning about in my pad playing me old penis and I feel... Yes, I told you so for our own sake, dear, don't we, Dawn? Yeah, <laughs> you know, last night we had the berries, grapefruit, the marmalade, cream, the fruit drops and vanilla party we were up all night. I'm not surprised after that, huh? <laughs> Yes, I dig. I dig, yeah. I, oh, yeah, I, I listen to Jimmy Young all the time. Good man. And I dig all the fat groups of groups of, you know, the Beatles and the, the Shadows and Headley Ward Trio and... Um, <laughs> How about Pink Floyd? Oh, she's lovely, yeah. She's... Oh, that Tom Jones really grooves me. He's a gas man. Oh, is he giving up singing now? <laughs> no, he told me Edson Brock. One ear and she's dead slow. She's over there in the cap gear. She's a bunny. Yeah, I can tell that by the buck teeth and the whiskers. <laughs> 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 ah, would you like a cigarette? Everything seems to have gone quite quiet. Huh? <laughs> Come on, Bob, let's learn. through letterbox? <laughs> that would be silly. Yeah, of course it would. No. <laughs> he walks around the room completely nude and he flips us all with lighted matches. Oh, it burns you up! <laughs> Don't they ever open a window in here? Yeah. Tell me about your wife. Oh, well, she... she doesn't understand me. <laughs> Why? Is she foreign? <laughs> No, she, she, she comes from Bradford, you know. Oh. But I, I very seldom see her. She's, she's all at night school every night. Oh. <laughs> uh, why she has to spend five hours a night, six hours nights, nights a week trying to learn how to make puff pastry, I'll never know. But oh. I keep telling her, Edna, I say. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> 
Jeff, he, he just came here across, across the water. Oh, oh, you shouldn't do things like this at your age. No, no, no. I'll go crazy if I don't get a drink. Miss! 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 All Miss. right, all right, man, come in. Oh, my God. Edgar! <laughs> <laughs> 